later, I'd about to come to the McFroy's window. Right? Instead, I would just let in like I was anybody. Uh, <laughs> I've, um, I've always in two minds, you know, we've seen some of the demonstrations that you lot have been involved in the last couple of weeks. There's always, you know, there's a bit of me now that thinks, oh, look, I don't pretend that you're the same person you were when you were there, right? That just doesn't make sense. You can't, that's pathetic when people do that. You can go, yeah, good on you, but don't think. But I realise that you must pretend this. When I was listening to the Rage Against the Machine song, which is now it was famous because it was Christmas number one, um, uh, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. And I, I was listening to that a little while ago, and I realised I'm not the same person as I was because I was listening to it while I was hoovering. And, uh, <laughs> and it just doesn't have the same me. They go, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. I missed a bit beyond the city. <laughs> but... Um, but this is, uh, this is different. I've been involved in a whole load of campaigns uh, in the last 20 or 30 years. But God, I've got a son who's 14 and he might well be going to university. Although if you lose this, I'm fucking making sure he's not. <laughs> I'm going to go, are you revised? Yeah, will you fucking stop? You're going to fail in everything. What do you want, to be bankrupt? But because uh, uh, it's that age now, I think this isn't like, you know, before I go, yeah, I'll support a campaign for Mexican peasants to get their land back. Fucking me now! You better win this one, you bastards! I'm skint otherwise. Now this is this feels uh, this feels different. And my lad, he's um, he's keen to go on the demonstrations. He went on his first one. He's 14, and he went on the, his first one a little while ago, and it was a Palestine one, and it got a little bit, uh, it got a little bit fruity, and he was like, "Come on, Daddy!" On this pathetic moment, I thought, well, "What am I supposed to do?" Because uh, like, a few people sort of surged forward, and I said, "Come on, come on, we better go." And he went, what's the matter with you? There's people in Gaza going for all that suffering. <laughs> and you just want to go home in the wall? And I found myself doing this pathetic thing that you do with your kids of negotiating. And I went, all right then, you can go in there, but just for five minutes. <laughs> and I thought, that's pathetic, isn't it? Like, right, here is three pieces of rubble, that's your lot. No more. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I'm going to have to keep looking at my notes here because I don't quite have quite a Oh, yes, this is what I was saying, yes. Now, this, of course, as you're all aware of this, you know, this is not just about education. This is everything. Everything they're trying to do is, is like, similar to what they're trying to do to you. They're trying to do that everywhere because everything is about profit. That's the way this government and the, most of the people who run the world now think. Profit, profit, everything's got to be... They can't imagine. That's when they talk about the whole, the whole rationale of the fees. It's all because, um, well, you're going to earn more if you've got a degree. And then it's only then you're going to earn more, so it's only right that you can. No, that's the only way they can see the world. It's like people want to learn things so that they can earn more money. It just doesn't enter their head that someone might want to learn things because it's a brilliant thing to learn things. That doesn't, and it, of course, it, it, that affects everything. And there'll be, it'll be uh, everyone, if, if they had their way, everyone would have to pay for education at all levels. That lecture, all the lessons would be sponsored. <laughs> the science lecturers would say, uh, right, this next experiment is one in which we're going to see how much of this green fizzy liquid here uh, is displaced by this metal <coughs> object here. And the liquid we're going to use is lilt with the totally tropical taste. <laughs>
said, um, I'll tell you what, Dad, he said, oh, don't worry. He said, I'll never miss an opportunity to remind him that we saved their lot in the war. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for us, they'd have been stuffed. We had to bail them out in the war. And I said, oh, listen, listen. I said, you know the battle that stops Hitler being able to even think about invading here with the aeroplanes? He said, the Battle of Britain. The Battle of Britain, yes. I said, do you know, one in five of the pilots, do you know where they come from? Yeah. They come from Poland. He turned straight to his mate, he said, see you were nicking our jobs even back then. Oh, then, of course, 
the next thing, and this is everything, and of course you'll know this, this is the argument with the fees, always the same. Every single thing, whether it's fees, NHS, whatever it is they're cutting, back comes this, this argument of the deficit, this enormous, we don't want to cut things, but oh, the deficit. And then they come out with all these figures. But we think, where have you got this from? It just made them up, just rubbish things. They'll say, before I address this issue, let us just look at the scale of the problem that we are facing. We now owe more than £80 for every insect in Britain. <laughs> the value of our debt is now greater than the value of the moon. We now owe... <laughs> We now owe the equivalent of 700 years on a premium rate, girl on girl, hot action lesbian. <laughs> Even if you look the, through the wrong end of a telescope, this debt is now bigger than Mexico. If it was a bee, it would be able to sting the whole of Spain. If it was a cabbage, it would be 65 cabbages. It is louder than Judas Priest. If we do not control this deficit, we will end up like Greece, and then we will have to smash all our plates and eat dinner off the floor. Is that <laughs> Come out with anything, and they get you can tell they're all their riches, especially the liberals. They're going, Oh, they're like they're like a little kid that's gone to work with his dad. <laughs> <laughs> if we cut something, let us cut something. <laughs> and so that's what everything is we cut, cut, cut. They don't care because they're almost relishing it. They'll be this time next year if they get away with it, all the everything. NHS, they'll be going, Right, we're going to privatise everything in the NHS to make it more efficient, and in order to raise funds, we're going to we're going to force chemo therapy patients to advertise the, uh, use advertising space on the top of their heads. We're going to, we're, we're going to uh, schizophrenics will have to have the voices in their heads sponsored. <laughs> so that they'll be wandering around going, okay, well, nobody tells me to burn nothing down anymore, but I think thinking they can't get quicker than a quick fit fitter. <laughs> <laughs> patients will have to pay for their, for their treatment and uh, in order to cut the deficit, Alzheimer's patients will be asked to pay twice in the knowledge they'll have forgotten they paid the first time. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the this is what they're gonna do if they're allowed to get if they're allowed to get away with it. It's a terrible weapon look at me now, isn't it? And then, of course, of course, there is I think this liberal, these liberals who have crawled in with all this and they're all so excited. Of course, their argument for years was really before the election it seemed their argument was Britain is sick and tired of being governed by the same two identical squabbling parties. What the public is crying out for <coughs> is to be governed by three identical squabbling <laughs> 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 And so there they are now with this with the pledge, because now even by the standards of British politicians, which is not a high bar really, <laughs> that is a spectacular piece of lying. To not just say, well, uh, we think we're going to lower the fees and then over years sort of forget about it, which is what they normally do, but to say, no, 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 we're going to, we are going to scrap the fees. If we are, that is our, our, our policy, to scrap them. And we know you're not necessarily going to believe us, so here we are. We are we're going to have ourselves film signing a pledge. <laughs> we will sign an ancient parchment that is in blood. And we shall say, indeed, verily, that the pledge shall be foretold that we, indeed, as liberal Democrats, will do all on the souls of our children and all those we have ever known. Indeed, shall it be the great pledgeless. Let, let a million lightning bolts come down upon our miserable liberal souls if ever we, if ever we deny that this great great aspiration should be one that we turn our back on, oh wonderful place to scrap the fees and a week like, well we're going to treble them actually scrap, treble, you know you can, we get them all mixed up, it's like you know, it's like, it's like stalactites and stalagmites we're always getting all fucked up you know, which is a bit... So what's the point of any Liberal Democrat saying anything ever again that they can do? Anything! <laughs> <laughs> Once you have on that scale, there is no point if, if they 
they just get up and say, well, what we're planning... Oh, fuck off! <laughs> matter what you say, at the next election, Clegg might as well get up and say, well, for my three minutes, there isn't really me any doing anything at all, saying what I'm going to do. So instead, to make the time useful, here's some shadow puppets. <laughs> And, uh, and Cable, who, of course, is the most upsetting one because we trusted him. So many people trusted him. And he, I, I did think about, yeah, oh, well. probably not a bad bloke. I mean, I thought, I thought he's all right, I suppose. You know, he looks, he looks all cuddly like the bloke on the daddy's sauce bottle. He looks, <laughs> he looks all right, doesn't he? And he's Vince Cable. And, uh, and, uh, uh, it, but now he's done all this. He's the worst one of them. Now he don't know what to do. It's worse. And really, Vince Cable, it seems to me, has managed to combine in one personality the demeanour of Mr. Kipling <laughs> with the ideas of Norman Tebby. <laughs> um, oh, this is how we should be introduced now, I think. Every time he comes on in voice, he say, Mr. Cable wanted to be in the government. <laughs> so he set out to do all the things that he said would be disastrous only a few weeks ago. But then Mr. Cable is an exceedingly ambitious, unprincipled, grubby little shit. <laughs>
Saudi Arabia is a marvellous place for women's rights. It's the one place where women don't get any extra penalties for drinking and driving. Because <laughs> <laughs> they get executed for either, so they might as well be both at the same time. Because the thing as well with the, uh, the whole issue of everything being cut, 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 is, and I'm sure most people here are like this, for years you've been saying, say, well, you know, what, uh, what should we do about the economy? So well, the first thing you do is sack the bankers. The first thing of the year is... <laughs> the year, you say that, you say that to me, they're the only people who don't seem to be having their incomes cut. So for years you say that, people sack the bankers, and people go, yeah, whatever, mate, yeah. But now, if you say to someone, I'll tell you what you should do, we should sack the bankers. Now, they go, what? Sack them? Sack them. I'll tell you what we should do. Never mind sack them, right? We should strip their skin off, right? <laughs> Smear it with marmalade, right? And then shove them in a post box and put a top over it and then inject a fucking thousand wasps into it. Never mind sack them. We should give them a shovel and send them to Austria and make them dig a fucking cell underneath Joseph Fritzel's and then pop up saying, hello, I'll here for the rest of your life. To stop you getting home sick, Mr. Fritzel. Never mind sack them. I don't know what we should do. We should sanitate them to a pig and roll them into an armed jihadist warrior camp. <laughs> with a note saying, I'm a work of art. I'll give you fucking sack them. Tune in at 
random moments and you'll hear him going, let me put it to you. <laughs> Your vicissitudes and vituperations will render you liable to nothing more than the ignominious descent into oblivion that has become inevitable as a result of your own obsequious lick spittleness. That, that is all I have to say to you, Dave from Basingstoke. <laughs> Something, uh, there's something else as well about the way uh, this is all going, which is that uh, uh, with this coalition, and it was true in Labour before, there's something else they're after as well as just our money. I think they want our souls now. They want everything identical. You know, you go to a town and they can't abide the idea that there's a town with, that has got a little bit that can't be controlled from some head office somewhere. You know, so everything, every town exactly the same, every retail park identical everywhere, right down to the fact that every single town centre and shopping mall in Britain has to have these Peruvians sat there playing, <laughs> playing, I just called to say I love you on the fucking pamphlet. <laughs> Good luck to them, I don't mind, you know, but uh, this, uh, this uh, it does seem a bit peculiar. I wonder if they have a meeting every year in Peru, they all have to go up there and be told where they're to be sent to. <laughs> like a chief one that says, Juan, Sebastian, you go to Peterborough. <laughs> and then they get and it's a little bit side up, traditional panpipe music from ancient South America, and they're playing Lady Gaga and shit. <laughs> and, uh, I, which that seems very strange to me. But like if we sent like traditional English musicians over to Peru and stood there in the, the middle of Peru and uh, that's doing Chaz and Day. <laughs> they said they were singing old South American songs. Oh, but do the to Chaz and Day style. Oh, there ain't no limit to the Inca spirit because when all said and done. <laughs> what a wise old man sings right across the Andes, puts him at one with the God of the sun. <laughs> but they want to they control everything. And of course, uh, the, the king of this, the king of this, this world in which one identical soulless machine has to just dominate everywhere. His Tesco's just plonked everywhere. They spring up through little cracks in the pavement. <laughs> They're like bindweed. You see a gap and you turn around and it's a fucking Tesco. They'll be, they'll be putting them up in your house soon. In the middle of the night, you'll hear bang, 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 bang. You'll go downstairs and there'll be a bloke and I'm just knocking up a Tesco Express in this little corner. <laughs> Get up and bake lasagna at three in the morning. It's just everywhere. And they con people because they're such miserable places. They want to dominate everything. You can get legal advice in there now. Buy houses in there, everything. And soon there'll be an advert where, where Jane Horrocks says to Prunella Scales, uh, You're coming out tonight, Mother? And she'll say, Not likely, darling. Not while Tesco's are offering special springtime savings on top quality Afghan skunk. <laughs> <laughs> everything. And people say, But it's convenient. You can get all your shopping in one place. Well, of course you can. That's because it's so huge, isn't it? I might as well say, I go somewhere where I get all my shopping in one place, France. <laughs> <laughs> but all of this, now this, uh, you might not agree with me about this, maybe this is an age thing, but mm. I think the loads of these sort of the, the gadgets and stuff that come along now, it's almost like they want to control us. I'm not a big conspiracy person, but I think, what, you know, like sat navs and stuff, I don't know, I suppose useful, aren't they? But once everyone's using them, even that bit of your brain switched off, yeah. instead of looking at a map or out the window, just right. going, that's how these people end up fucking driving up canals and stuff like that. <laughs> It says it's right. Look, 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 look. <laughs> I'd a plumber. I'll call this plumber out. And let's say, right, let's say I live at number one three five, right? Let's say, right. So the blokes, the blokes come round, and he's in my road. I can see him, and he's driving up and down and up. And then he stops and rings, and he goes, "Where is your house, mate?" I said, it's 135. He said, yeah, but the sat nav's getting all confused. Where is it? I said, I don't know how to answer without sounding sarcastic, to be honest, but when you get to 133, <laughs> then you're nearly there, really. If you get to 137, you've gone too far. He <laughs> goes, but where is it? I can't find that. And I said, well, if you look up, go fuck the sat nav. Look at the numbers. The numbers will give you the clue here. 
had numbers. I'm like, wait, I said they had numbers. They go in sequence. They start with little tingly numbers. Like on Sesame Street. And they get bigger and bigger and bigger numbers. They're not random fucking numbers like the lottery results. <laughs> but I said, Fuhrer, I thought, he'll just wander around his house. And every couple of days, his wife goes, oh, what's that smell like? And he'll go, cool. Sorry, I went to the toilet, but the sat nav sent me to the kitchen bottle. <laughs> But all of these things, like, you know, on my phone at home, there's a mute button on, on the phone. <laughs> what? Uh, does that not, maybe, it's, is it an age thing? That strikes me as an odd, what moron invented that? <laughs> you know what, I think a phone needs one extra little innovation. It needs something for those irritating moments when you can hear the person. <laughs> <laughs> the mute, but I know, that's it. Now, if I want to talk into a mute phone, I'm talking to a carrot. This is not <laughs> But all of this is as nothing compared to the evil that is the call centre, the soullessness, that is the, the, the destruction of all human contact, human interaction, just destroy, no sense. Even if you go into a shop and someone's a grumpy bastard, at least they're a human grumpy bastard, and they're able to talk in their own language, not read off a script and these miserable, so you have to work yourself up for days, I'm not going to ring, I can't face ring, I can't get gas forward, I can't, I can't, three hours of Celine Dion, I can't stomach it, no, 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 even if it's been an explosion, no, I won't, I'll just in the rubble for a few days. <laughs> and all the while you're waiting for them to answer the call, they give you a little message saying we're doing all we can to answer your call. All we can. We're doing all we can. And you want to grab hold of one of these bastards and go, All we can? What do you mean all you can? Here's one fucking technique you haven't tried yet. Picking up the sodding phone. <laughs> See if that works. What do you mean all you can? You sit there going, Oh, we put a cat on it. We put it in cuffs. <laughs> and then it says, Due to an unusually high volume of calls. Oh. An unusually, an unusually high volume. They must get in every day and go, would you believe it? It's unusual again. <laughs> Yesterday it was an unusually high for you. And the day before it's been unusually high every day for five years. I don't know if one day we'll come in here and the usual thing will happen. <laughs> and in any case, you're lying about it being such a fucking totally unexpected, impossible to bloody predict scenario, isn't it? Because if it was, why is it you've got a little pre-recorded message just on the off show? Just on the off chance that this completely unforeseeable event might unusually take place, eh? or, or have you got a pre-recorded message for every unusual scenario? Have you got another one that goes, due to the fact that a rhino has gone berserk in the middle? I'm <laughs> so insulting, all that. I'd rather they just said, we're not answering the call because we hate your guts. <laughs> so insulting. Shagging your mistress. But then, just to add to the insult, you just carried on going, Please remember that you are still important to me. <laughs> and I am currently receiving a high degree of attention from that <laughs> While you are waiting, why not consider some of the many benefits that will be on offer this <laughs> You are being held in a queue. <laughs> people that you wouldn't imagine that, uh, that are going, oh, 
fucking brilliant, isn't it? Fucking brilliant. And, uh, and there's a, a load of load of stuff like that. I'll just say it shortly about the, the phone-ins and that that you hear. You think, oh, right, here we go. And then quite loads and loads of people go, well, I think it's brilliant. Someone's got to do something. And I don't know whether the majority of people support what you're doing. I don't know. But what I do know is that, the, uh, that anyone who's got a little bit of go in them, a little bit of humanity, a little bit of a sense of community, a little bit of a, a feeling that we shouldn't live in a Ryanair society where everyone just looks after for, for themselves and bollocks to everybody else. Everybody who feels like that and has got a little bit of spirit in them has been hugely, hugely infused by what you lot are doing. And I think you should be incredibly proud of that. I don't mean to sound all patronising and old, but I'm 50, so bollocks. And, uh, <laughs> so I think, I think it's tre tremendously exciting and I love being here tonight and uh, I hope that many, many more of you all join in this campaign and it will be the start, I think, of something that isn't just about students, but that, as you all I know, recognise, is about everything that's being turned into something just for some soulless bastard's profit instead of that. <laughs>